Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Good morning from Lahore, Pakistan, and Assalamu Alaikum. I am Dr. Javed Iqbal Kokar, Professor of Forensic Medicine and Toxicology. As I am discussing drowning, and this is the fifth lecture of this series. And the learning objective of this lecture will be that I will be discussing what are post-mortem appearances in drowning. They are actually the signs of drowning. And they are either the external appearances or the internal autopsy findings. So, starting with the topic postmortem appearances, they are signs of asphyxia unless the death occurred from some other causes. The typical signs of drowning are only well seen in the fresh bodies immediately when they are recovered from the water. But later on, when the putrefaction sets in, these signs are masked. The typical findings, as I told you, they are the external appearances and the internal autopsy findings. In this lecture, I will be discussing the external signs of appearances external signs or external appearances. Number one, wet appearance. If the body is freshly recovered from the water, the clothes will be wet, the skin will be wet, cold, clammy and pale due to contraction of the blood vessels. Then the eyes will be usually half open or closed and the conjunctivae are congested and the pupils are dilated. The face may or may not be cyanotic. Regarding the postmortem hypostasis or the staining, it may be confined to the dependent area as the head, neck and the chest, they are the heavier, they are dependent and usually they are confined to the these regions, to the head, neck and the front of chest being the most dependent parts when the body is immersed in still water. So this is important when the body is in still water these areas are heavier and they are dependent. But if the body is in running water as it is constantly changing its position and time may, may not have uh, been given to the postmortem staining to develop on, so it will not be seen on any area and it has not been fixed in a specific area. Now about the rigor mortis, it sets in early because of the muscle exhaustion, because the person was struggling, the muscles were active when he was drowning, he was struggling, the muscles were active and all the ATPs and energies they were consumed. So that's why the rigor mortis sets in early in drowning. Then I told you in the previous lecture the two signs are of great importance which are the fine froth formation and the tightly clenched hands which is the cadaveric spares. The fine froth formation is a pathognomonic sign of anti-mortem drowning and as you know this froth is formed by the mucus secret secreted by the irritating mucosal membrane by the water inhalation and the respiratory efforts water and the mucus they are churned up and that form the fine froth. It is white or it may be blood stained, leathery abundant and increase in amount with slight compression on the chest even if it is wiped away. When you wipe it away, put a slight pressure on the chest, it will reappear from the nose and the mouth. And this is the pictorial diagram showing the fine froth and it is on the left side it is also showing the in the respiratory passages. And this is another picture showing the fine froth. And this froth formation is also seen in some other deaths like due to a condition of the lungs and in certain poisons such as 
opium, cocaine, barbiturates and organophosphorus compounds. However, in such cases the froth is neither fine nor it is so copious. Now about the tightly clenched hands and the cadaveric space as the person drowning is struggling, he tries to grasp everything and as he is in extreme emotional state and the muscles, small muscles with they are, they go into intense space and that is the cadaveric space. It is said as the last volitional activity of death. It is recording of the death. So, the tightly clenched hands, they are pathognomonic sign. So, the presence of weeds, mud, sand in these tightly clenched hands is an antimortem sign. And it is indicative of death from antimortem drowning as it shows the sign of struggle for the life by the victim. You can see these pictures, the grass and the weeds or the leaves, they have been grasped in the tightly clenched hands. Then the cutis and serena are the goose skin. The skin appears granular and puckered with hair standing on. It has got no value in the diagnosis of death due to drowning. It is produced by the spasm of the rectal pylori muscle due to exposure to the cold water at the time of death. And this is how it appears as puckered skin and the erected, erected pylori muscle. And this sign is also produced by the rigor mortis of the rectal pylori muscle. Similarly, the retraction of the penis and the testes is of no value for the diagnosis of such deaths. Now, the skin appears washerwomen hands and feet, that is sodden skin, as the washermen or the washerwomen, they are constantly standing in water and dealing with water, washing clothes, so their hands become sodden and that's why the drowning skin is said as washerwomen's women's hand and feet. The skin is wrinkled, bleached and sodden. It is seen on the palmar aspect of the hands and the sole of the feet. And it is due to the action of water on the thickened epidermis. And it is not a sure sign of drowning, but it tells that the body has been in water for a long time. You can see the hands, they are sodden. Similarly, the feet, they are sodden. So, thank you very much. This was all about the external autopsy finding, external sign. And I will continue in the next series of lecture about the internal autopsy finding. Take care, Allah Hafiz. Bye-bye. Please subscribe to my channel. And this is my channel name. Dr. Javed Iqbal Kokhar, Lectures on Forensic Medicine.